In this presentation, we will review our practice problem for a not-for-profit organization, including the beginning balances that are in the QuickBooks file as we start the practice problem, as well as the accompanying Excel file that we will be using in order to ground ourselves as we move forward in the practice problem within QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Desktop. Here we are in our QuickBooks file for crafts. We currently have the open windows open. You could open the open windows by going to the view dropdown and selecting the open windows list. Now we're going to take a look at the beginning balances. We do have some beginning balances that we will start off with here. If you're unable to restore the backup file for whatever reason, you can push forward with a, with a fresh uh, QuickBooks file instead of starting the backup file. However, it would be best to have the beginning balances so that we can tie them out to the practice problem. So if you don't have it, you could still pretty much push forward with a new file. You'll just have to set up the accounts in essence as we go. Note that the next problem that we will work will be completely from scratch as well so you can pick that file up if you so choose there so to see the beginning balances we're going to go to the reports drop down we're going to then go down to the accounting and taxes we're going to look at the trial balance if you're not used to the trial balance and you're more used to just looking at the profit and loss and the balance sheet which many most people are that's okay we will take a look at them as well but I want to get in the practice of looking at the trial balance. Even if you're not used to using debits and credits, it will be in a debit and credit format. It's a nice report because it will just give you those balances and it'll remove all of the subtotals and it'll have all accounts, including the balance sheet and income statement that are in use during the time period on the report, which is a nice report to look at. So we will be bouncing back and forth from the trial balance here. Hope that's not and, you know, it shouldn't be intimidating to anyone to do that. And if it is, you know, uh, it's something to really work on getting used to using. So we're going to run this from 010120 to 123120. That's January 1st, uh, 2020 to December 31st, 2020. This is going to be our trial balance. We have our list of accounts here. We've got our checking account, our receivables, our, uh, we don't want the clearing, the clearing account is zero. And then we've got the prepaid expenses. We've got the short-term investments. And then the undeposited funds is zero at this point. We'll talk about that account later. Uh, the allowance for depreciation, the equipment, the long-term investments, accounts payable, deferred revenue. The key thing that's different here and the not-for-profit than for the for-profit being in the equity section or as it's called in the not-for-profit, the net assets section. In the net assets section, we have three categorizations of this grouping. Now, as you think about equity, remember that equity is basically, you can think of it as a grouping all in one number, first of all, and you can think of that grouping for a not-for-profit. It's usually phrased as assets minus liabilities equals the equity or the net assets of the organization. That's the, those are the assets that people pretty much want to spend, right? The net assets, the equity section of the organization, people have big plans to spend that money that they, well, you know, that's what they want to spend on it. So that's going to be a key number, the, the assets minus the liabilities. Now, in normal accounting equation it's assets equal liabilities plus equity or net assets which is just another way to, of putting it we'll talk more about that in a second but then you want to break out the net assets between the uh the ones that are restricted in some ways and those that are not so that we can again people are going to try to make claims to these net assets so we want to say hey these are the unrestricted ones you can't really make uh, as much claims to these because they have restrictions on them and we want to make that clear so that's one of the major things we're going to have to deal with and we'll, we'll talk about how to deal with this restriction and unrestriction type of process as we record transactions within the quickbooks note that there aren't any uh, accounts down below this in terms of what would be like the income statement or profit and loss type of accounts because this is going to be our starting point uh, this is going to be basically as of January 1st, and then we're going to be entering transactions in January. If we take a look at the standard financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss, note I am going to use the terms that are in QuickBooks right now, which are income statement or, or the profit and loss, not even, an, and the balance sheet. I will use those terms, but when I, when I use those, I'm referring to the not-for-profit terms. We will talk about how we can uh, rename the financial statements and, and kind of the differences in the formatting of the financial statements. But in this practice problem, our goal is to use QuickBooks to generate and, and make the reports on a not-for-profit basis, given the fact that even we'll have to deal with some terminology issues 
in terms of the naming of the reports. And then we'll talk about, of course, how to how to deal with that so that we can change the names to whatever we need to present. Those are more uh, presenting problems. So here we're, we're focusing in on how can we get the transactions right and get everything moving forward. And then I think everything else in terms of presenting, that's just display. And to me, that's an easier thing to do. I mean, how do you rename the report, make it look nice and whatnot. And so we'll, we'll talk, which is important, all that's important. But here we're gonna be focusing on the transactions and then we'll, we'll talk about how to make the reports you know, look and format a little bit better in terms of the name and all that kind of thing. So let's go to the reports up top. We're going to go to the uh, company and financials. And then let's take a look first at the balance sheet report. Now, the other main reports, the profit and loss, but there is no profit and loss at this time. We haven't entered any data for the current time period. So we're going to take a look at the balance sheet standard report. Going to change the date up top to 12-31-20. So that's uh, December 31st, 2020. And you'll note yeah, you have, in essence, the same information here as we saw on the trial balance. However, we don't see the debits and credits, which may be a relief to some people. But again, don't worry about the debits and credits because all we're looking at is the balances. We will deal with debits and credits and I'll talk about them. But we're, we're, we want to set up the system so that people can enter data uh, without even really needing to know the debits and credits. So we'll talk about that as well. But note how, how fewer of these subcategories we have. We don't have all the subcategories and therefore it's a lot easier to maneuver around. Now, if we look at the balance sheet, just the format of the balance sheet is just like a for-profit in essence. If I was to like hide all these cells, these are these are basically formatted by the uh, account classes here. And, and we'll, we'll set up these accounts in a future uh, demonstration, but here we're gonna have the beginning balances. And if I was to minimize all these all these items, then you see the balance sheet is basically going to be broken out between assets, equal liabilities, and equity. Now, again, equity means for the QuickBooks file, net assets. So QuickBooks just calls that account type equity. But then if you open it up, it's going to be the permanent net asset accounts that are within it, within the equity type of account. So QuickBooks has to do that because they've named the type of account equity but the name of the account within it will be the actual name that not profits use which is net assets and not equity so it's just a kind of a formatting thing so the accounting equation is the same assets equal liabilities plus equity just remember though that in a not-for-profit organization you usually think of it as assets minus liabilities equals equity and that means that equity is the net value of the company now if you think about that you might say well that makes a lot more sense I, that's what i want to know is what's the net asset and what's the net value of the company? What's the net asset value, the equity? Uh, so why would an, an accountant use assets equal liabilities and equity? Just note that there's there's use to that too because the reason for that is basically it's just two sides of, this, of the same coin when you think about assets and liabilities and equity. Assets are what people, uh, what is owned by, by the organization, in this case a not-for-profit. The liabilities and equity represents who has claim to those assets. That's why it's a really useful way to look at it. It's the same thing. The assets are just basically what is owned. The liabilities mean that th those they have claim to those assets from a third party. On, and the equity means if it's a for-profit, the owner has claim to those assets. Or if it's a not-for-profit, those are the things that we have then available to use for the goal of the organization. So, so keep that. And then... The assets are going to be pretty much straightforward. We, uh, you know, in a similar format, we got the current assets, and then the type of accounts will be will give us these subcategories. Then we got the fixed assets and uh, the other assets, and then the liabilities and equity. We have our liabilities broken out in the subcategory, and then within the equity, we're going to call that net assets. Now. The, the other thing we need to set up, which we've already set up in this practice problem, next practice problem, we'll start it basically from scratch and set it all up from scratch. That's going to be the classes. And that's going to be in the drop down list up top. So if we go to lists and then we go to this class lists, we have the classes here. Now to do this from scratch, you need to first turn on classes, which is in the edit uh, drop down preferences. And then you'd have to turn on the classes. So if you're going to work this problem basically from scratch, you got to turn on the classes to do that. And then once the classes are set up, we would then go to the uh, lists. We would go to the class list. And these are the classes that we have set up here. We've got the main two categories are going to be unrestricted and restricted. Those are our two classes. 
Then within unrestricted, we made a class called programs. And in order to set up classes, you simply go to the classes drop down or classes rise up and add a new class. And then the programs class is a subcategory of unrestricted. Closing this back out. Then we've got education, which is a subclass of the programs. And then we have the uh, exhibition subclass of programs. Then we have the fundraising subclass of unrestricted. Then we have the admin subclass unrestricted. And then we have the restricted down here, no subclass. What this will do is it'll allow us to make a profit and loss by class. You can see here reports, company and financial profit and loss by class. That profit and loss by class will then be broken out from left to right as unrestricted, then programs and so on to restricted. We will also be able to collapse the columns for the unrestricted items uh, within it. So that's, that's what the classes are gonna, gonna do for us. Now let's take a look. We're going to follow along with an Excel file because Excel is going to be really transparent. If you were to try to think about how are you going to do this on a paper and pencil, that's basically like an Excel sheet rather than bouncing around to these different screens that basically do stuff and then magically appears. So it, well, let's think about it from Excel and then think about how we're going to apply that to, the, to QuickBooks because this can be a little bit complicated because we are going to be using uh, class tracking and jobs here. So those are two somewhat complicated items that are, you know, are vi you got to kind of visualize what's going to happen in, uh, in different areas with those. So let's try to lay it out on one sheet here in our Excel sheet first. So here's going to be our Excel problem we will be working through. I'm going to start off with the example tab up front. So this is going to be the example tab. The basic breakout of our problem we're going to enter is going to be on the left side. It's just general, uh, you know, I might deviate a little bit from this. It's going to be the general information, though. It's going to be a not-for-profit organization. We have two programs. It's going to be the exhibition. Our focus is on crafts. So we have the exhibition uh, uh, information or program and then the education about crafts. Those are going to be our two programs that we set up. You could see those. We set those up within the classes. Then we're going to have our transactions down here on the left. We're going to enter those transactions in journal entry format. Don't get intimidated by this long worksheet or the journal entry format of it because it's, it's really just a guide. So we can see it, you know, what would it be like if we did this by paper and pencil with just journal entries. And then we can, we're going to post these journal entries to a little worksheet here. And that gives us basically a chart of accounts, assets in green, liabilities in orange, the net assets which are like the equity in light blue and then what would be kind of like the income statement in the dark blue down below and we'll post these in such a way that we can see the beginning balance see the change and see the ending balance and this gives us a very transparent way of seeing it again you don't really have to do it in excel you can we will provide these excel worksheets for you you don't have to do it though because this is just really a way to see what happens on just an account level and then think about what we want to do at the end of the day here now Note, when you look at something like this, it's only a two-dimensional type of thing. So that means that, that I, I don't have any, any added columns. I have to do this with debits and credits, which means I just have, you know, a two-dimensional type of, of one type of transaction thing unless I, unless I make a far more complex type of, type of worksheet. So when you're thinking about just debits and credits, this is what we would have. And that means that a lot of the, a lot of the stuff, rather than building on separate columns to, to break things out like different programs and whatnot uh, we basically have that we're going to have to do that with accounts here so we'll show that we're actually going to post this and we'll show different accounts and the accounts will be something like uh, with restrictions these are contributions like an income type of account with restrictions uh, this is without restrictions this is with restrictions and this one has res restrictions as well now, you, would, you could think, well, if there's restrictions, we could build that something to the right as a column and, and have, the, have another column over here. You can't do this, again, on this kind of two-dimensional thing, but if you can think of it as, a, as another column, we can build that out. And that's what the jobs are, and the, that's what the, well, the jobs will kind of do that. The classes within QuickBooks will help us to do. So we'll see that. Now, as we enter things into, into this system, we also see that we'll, we'll have this broken out by the natural format of the expenses this is what we expect to be expenses if you ask somebody to list expenses they'll say something like rent expense salaries expense telephone expense utilities expense and so on 
but we also want to see those expenses broken out by the nature of them, what they're used for in terms of the program, admin general, and so on. There's no real way to do that in this kind of like worksheet, this debit and credit kind of two dimensional type of worksheet. So you got to have to kind of imagine like, well, how can, you know, how are we going to do this in QuickBooks where we can basically manipulate the reports to show more of what we need? And so just to get a, a, a an idea of that, what we would have to do here is basically if it's a two dimensional worksheet is make another uh, sheet in Excel to basically break out the information by by the function of the expenses so we'd have to take all the expenses then and break them out such as some percentage that we're going to choose that that's going to be the format that we break them out in and then we can break them out in this type of format uh, in terms of of the expenses broken out into the categories and this would allow us to then if we wanted to make a profit and loss type statement or an income type statement such as this statement of activities we can break it out then and say, instead of showing the natural expense categories, we can show the expense categories that are gonna be by the program. And it might be easier to see on this example tab over here. I'm gonna make this a bit larger and then scroll over. And so if we look at the statement of activities, we, now we're showing the expenses down here. Notice we don't have the normal expenses. We're not showing, we're not showing that we have the utilities and the rent and whatnot what we're saying is hey look these are the expenses for the exhibition program this is this commit for the education the management in general and fundraising and you can see how this statement might be a little bit easier on the eyes to someone like a board member at a not-for-profit that may not be used to a lot of detail in financial statements we already have kind of too much detail with the breaking out of the restricted and non-restricted and whatnot if we have a whole long list of expenses then that might not be as useful as telling them hey look this is what we spent the money on function wise and and then if they want the more breakout of that of the total expenses provide them with the expenses something like this which gives both the nature and uh the function of it so that those are the types of things that we gotta we gotta add to this inform this information and not for profit you can imagine if you're talking about a a uh, for-profit the income statement is straightforward you got one thing one column you have one goal that goal is revenue generation we don't need multiple different columns typically unless we're doing something that we're trying to track separately and therefore the income statement is actually fairly more straightforward here we have to track the things that have restrictions and not restricted so we have to break that out and we also want to basically represent in down here by the uh what what we're using these items for so and so we're going to break that out in this format so the bottom line is typically what we need, what we need to do within within QuickBooks is provide something that will give uh, at least this information, the restricted and the non-restricted with those columns. And we need to provide the information in some way, shape or form by both function, what the expenses are used for and what the nature of the expenses. Now, how we present that to people can vary because you know we could provide one report with all that information on it and that would be sufficient for reporting requi requirements it would have everything you need for reporting requirements but it would overwhelm a board member or something like that if you would give it to someone on the board and you have this huge income statement that shows you know the nature and the function of the expenses and all all this information it would be it would be a, a long ugly thing so when you present it then your your thought is well I need to I need to have all the information I need, but I need to give it in bite-sized chunks, right? I need to give it in in a chunk that people can make a preliminary decision, and then when they want it, when they're intrigued in it, you slowly intrigue them, and they're like, huh, maybe I want, maybe I would like to know more information. I kind of understand this. Maybe I'll actually look, you know, look at it a little bit deeper, and then you have the the other information that you can provide. So within QuickBooks, then how can we format our, our information so that we can generate these types of things, these generate these different types of reports in a way that meets our requirements and in a way that's going to basically um, be easy for people to read. And what we'll do then is on this kind of breakout, we'll use classes. So to do this, we'll use classes and that will allow us to make it a profit and loss by class report which will which will make something that we can then collapse down to remove the classes so we can then in, in essence have something that looks like this with only two columns and not have all the classes for uh for the restricted items and the and the unrestricted items and then we can uncollapse the column and say 
oh, you want more information? Boom, here's a huge, <laughs> huge thing of a lot more information. That's one way we can, we're going to format that and we'll use the classes in order to do that. And the other thing that we need to track for us is we, we also want to track the restricted items. You'll notice on the profit and loss down here, we have this column for restricted items and it's all grouped together and we could have multiple different restricted items. They could have someone, you know, that might be restrictions based on the the uh, program that they want to put money into or or other kind of restrictions on how to use the fund a bunch of different types of restrictions so we need to track those different types of restrictions as well and so we can't use the classes to do that because we've already you know used the classes to break out the expense allocation which is going to be these therefore in order to break out the more detail there we're going to use jobs and we can do a similar type of item there we can track the jobs and that and the jobs will be used then to track different type of of restricted items so then we, we can see whether the the restricted items are still restricted or when they're going to be unrestricted and so on and so forth so you can you can visualize this type of thing it's a little it can it can be a little bit intimidating to first jump into the not-for-profit because we we not only have the trial balance we're going to be looking for but then you got to expand your thinking about how you're going to think about the way these tables are going to look like and say, okay, what are the classes going to do to it, which will in essence take your profit and loss numbers, the dark blue numbers down below, and add a column to it. It's going to break out these expenses by category. And those categories are going to include the programs, the admin uh, type of categories. Then on top of that, you also want to think about the restricted items, the items that are going to be restricted and say, well, how are we going to track those restrictions? And we'll do that with the, the job, the job tracking. So that's going to be our objective. Keep those in mind. We'll do this very slowly in a step-by-step -step type of process. Process. We'll move back to uh, QuickBooks and we'll enter this into QuickBooks one journal entry at a time. Now, just in terms of this Excel worksheet, just to talk about this a, a little bit more, note that the Excel worksheet is going to be in order assets, liabilities, and then what would be equity in a for-profit, not-for-profit net assets, and then the income and expense accounts. And, and so that's going to be the color coding. In terms of debits and credits, the debits will be positive numbers. The credits will be negative numbers. Debits and credits will be uh, zero, indicated by the green zero at the bottom, because debits minus the credits equals zero. And this will be the net income number. So the net income is going to be the sum of all the income statement numbers. Now, this is a really easy format to work with once you get used to it because it, it can give you a lot of information. So what we were talking about before in terms of assets equal liabilities plus equity, the accounting equation, you'll, you'll note that if you, if you think about all the numbers together, this will always work. If you take all the assets here, assets minus the liabilities, debits minus the credits, assets minus the liabilities, it adds up to 26,393. 26,393, that equals the net assets or what the company's worth, which equals all the blue accounts, which would, and this is why you can think of all the blue accounts, including income and expenses, if you were to add them all up, debits minus the credits or credits minus the debits, that's gonna equal the 26,393 as well. So that's what I mean when you when you say no, it doesn't matter what type of organization you have, for profit, not for profit, you know, sole proprietor, partnership, corporation. The the equity as a whole, whether you call it equity, net position, net assets, is all in essence the same thing in in the sense that it's going to be assets minus liabilities or the net assets of the organization. The difference between this net assets then is how you want to break that out. If it's a partnership, you got to break it out by the, the partners corporation you got to break it out by the types of shares that it has and and so on and so forth with a, with a not-for-profit you got to break it out by the amount of that of those net funds those net assets that are restricted for some reason and those that are not restricted now also note that you can think about this in terms of the of the accounting equation which is assets up top green 45 uh 120 uh, 123 equals liabilities and equity the blue and the orange liabilities and equity then add up to the 25 123 i mean 45 123 and then the assets let's do that one more time assets 45 123 so the assets then are are what the company has liabilities means they're claimed by a third party equity means they're claimed in essence by the organization which means for a not-for-profit they then can be used in some way for the objective of that organization